This video is going to be a guide of how to prepare for a bike ride. I won't go into real specifics as far as mechanics or clothing or nutrition. It's going to be more of an overview. I'll gear the video more towards a beginner, someone who's newer to the sport of cycling. Most veterans already have a routine pretty nailed down. However, if you are an experienced cyclist, you may still pick up some tips from this video. I recommend the night before a ride to go out and check the tires on your bike and see if you have a flat or a slow leak. As inconvenient as it is to change a flat, it's much more inconvenient to do it on the morning of a ride, especially if it's an event or you have someone waiting for you. If you notice one tire that's unusually low, go ahead and air it up. That way you can check it in the morning and see if you had a flat or a slow leak. If you're doing a road or gravel ride, you may use something like Ride with GPS to map out your route. I recommend doing this the night before your ride. Ride with GPS is nice because it's web based and it has an app so even if you don't have a Garmin you can open it up on your phone and see where you're at on your course. Also it's nice because you can create the course and share it with someone so if you're riding by yourself it's really best practice to share the route with someone so they'll know where you're at. You would just click on the share button in the top right on your route and then you can select an email account to send it to. So send it to a spouse or a friend that way they'll know where you're at and let them know what time you think you'll be back just for safety. And of course it's always a good idea to check the weather forecast for tomorrow so while you're on the computer do that or just use your phone and use an app like the weather channel to see what the weather's going to be like. And don't forget to put your cell phone on charge. Cell phones are great whether you're listening to music on your ride, using an app like Strava or Ride with GPS to check your route, or just using it as a communication device for safety. Also, if you use a Garmin, don't forget to make sure it's charged. And Garmin's, by the way, I found use about 15% battery per hour, so plan accordingly. On the morning of your ride, try to eat at least an hour before you ride. If it's a race or really long or hard ride, two to three hours would be preferable. Some protein is good, but focus on carbohydrates. And don't eat sugary cereals or a lot of simple carbs that are going to raise your blood sugar and then drop you halfway through your ride. One of my favorite pre-ride meals is oatmeal with cinnamon raisin and a little bit of honey. Whether I'm riding or not, I have a stretching routine that I do every morning. Most of my stretches focus on my IT band and my back. There's some debate on whether or not you should stretch before or after a ride, but I would recommend at least loosening up your IT band and your back and maybe some other muscles with a foam roller. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as nutrition, but since it's such a vital part of riding, I want to mention a few things. As a general rule, use one water bottle for every hour of riding. In really hot conditions, you might go through a water bottle every 45 minutes, or in cooler conditions, every hour and 15 minutes. The hotter it is and the harder you're riding, the more you really need to focus on electrolytes, especially if your ride is more than an hour. I like Heed. It's a drink that has carbohydrate and electrolytes mixed in. I also use Heed and Duralites, which are tablets you can take. So if you just want to put water in your water bottle, you can also swallow those tablets during your ride. I use about two tablets every hour. I have a pretty fast metabolism, so I have to focus on bringing food if my ride is more than an hour long. I like peanut butter and honey sandwiches. It's a pretty cheap option and gives you carbohydrate and protein as you ride. I'm also a big Cliff Bar fan, so I will usually bring at least one or two Cliff Bars on a ride. I eat about one Cliff Bar per hour, and I also throw in an extra Cliff Bar just as a backup in case. So this ride that I was doing was about four hours, so that's about the amount of food that I brought for four hours. Before getting dressed for your ride, check the hourly forecast one more time. The last thing you want to do is get caught out in some rain or dropping temperatures without having the proper clothing with you. Arm warmers and a light jacket are so versatile in riding. Whether the temperatures are going to heat up during your ride or cool off, 
A windbreaker can cover quite a span of temperature ranges and it stuffs easily into the back of your jersey. Wearing a base layer like this one is also pretty versatile because it keeps you warm in cooler weather and absorbs sweat when the temperatures start to rise. If you're driving somewhere to start your ride, do yourself a huge favor and make a checklist that you use every single time. Getting to the start of the ride and forgetting something like shoes will end it before it even begins. I have a list that I keep in Google Docs and it's in my head now, I've gone through it so many times, but I literally go through this checklist every time before I head out on a ride. The top 10 items on my list are shoes, socks, shorts, jersey, gloves, heart rate monitor, glasses, helmet, watch, and arm coolers or arm warmers depending on the temperatures. Also things like food and water, bug spray, shimmy cream, tools, pump, earphones. And I have a bag that has different compartments such as a helmet compartment and a shoe compartment. And I take this bag to work and to rides all the time. Another thing that I keep is a tool bag that has things like a pump, tire levers, tube, that kind of thing that I use when I'm mountain biking and I can just put it in my jersey. If you use a seat pack for your tools, make sure it's on your bike and you haven't taken it off for cleaning. Also your pump and your mirror. These are items I have all the time with me. And don't forget to put your Garmin on your bike if you use one of those as well. If you keep your bike properly maintained and clean, the only thing you need to do before heading out on a ride is to lube your chain and air up your tires. I'll hold the chain lube above the chain and spin the pedal backwards for about 5 or 10 seconds and drip the chain lube. I don't bother lubing every individual link. Whether tube or tubeless, any bike tire is going to leak a little bit of air overnight, so you always want to make sure you air it up before you head out on your ride, putting it to the proper PSI for the type of tire and your weight. Every bike pump's gauge tends to read a little bit differently, so if you want to get real accurate, use a digital pressure gauge such as this one. Check your PSI, and if you're newer to the sport, write down the air pressure that you used and also write down how the bike rode, that way you can adjust it and get the proper PSI now down. Before you start pedaling, make sure you carry everything with you. Like I said earlier, this is the bag that I use when I go mountain biking and I keep my tools in it. Don't forget to put your water bottle on your bike. And also make sure you put your food, your cell phone, and another water bottle if you're carrying it with you, which I do when I'm mountain biking because I only have one water bottle holder on my bike. Whether you're riding in a group or by yourself, it's always a good idea to text a spouse or friend what time you're leaving, where you're going, and what time you expect to be back, just in case. So go have a great ride. Thanks for watching.